Hey friends, Brandon Paul here. Thank you so much for joining me as always. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five levels to the caged system. Let's do this. This system is based around your five open chords, C, A, G, E, and D. The idea here is to see the fretboard in chord shapes, because once you start adding in your scales, your arpeggios, your favorite licks, basically anything that you could possibly play on the guitar, it certainly makes it that much more organized. The biggest advantage with this system, in my opinion, is being able to learn everything in one key and then easily just copying and pasting it to all other 11 keys in music. Since everything revolves around a shape with the caged system, it makes it that much easier to associate all the things I was mentioning before across the fretboard. Starting off with level one, you want to learn these five shapes. C, A, G, E, and D. From there, you want to choose a tonal center or just one key signature where you can play all five of those shapes but staying on that same root. So let's use C major as our example. C shaped C, A shaped C, G shaped C, E shaped C, D shaped C, and then we'll play the C shaped C up the octave so you can see the position. The idea here is to get the shapes under your fingers and make that connection of how they relate to the open chords. Going into level two, you now want to add in your pentatonic scales. So C major pentatonic for all of these. Moving on to the A shape. What I like to do is chord, scale, chord. I find that this really kind of locks it in the brain and helps you associate it a lot quicker with chord shapes. So the G shape, same chord, it's a C chord. Same scale, pentatonic, but we're locking it into a shape each time. Now the E shape. D shape. And then we'll play the C shape up the octave again. Just remember that with pentatonic, you're just playing those same five notes over and over. That really goes with anything on the guitar. You're just moving up higher or lower. But with pentatonic specifically, hence the word penta, you're just dealing with the same five notes over and over in these shapes. Before we move on, please give a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Every single week, I'm posting tons of content and you don't wanna miss out. So be sure to subscribe. Let's get back to the lesson. Level three, adding in your arpeggios to each of these shapes. Playing the individual notes of the major chord, you can think of it as the triad as well, the one, three, five, going through this on all six strings. So C shape. We're simply just going through and playing the triad here, right? A major chord consists of a root, third, and a fifth. Let's keep going. A shape. G shape. E shape. D shape. Hopefully this also gives you new insight on arpeggios. 
I think for a lot of players, when they think of arpeggios, they think of fast sweeping or some sort of technique associated. But effectively, arpeggios are really just the notes within the chord. Moving on to level four, chord additions and extensions. And what I mean by this is you're not limited to major or minor. You can use any chord quality for that matter. Major, minor, dominant, augmented, diminished, suspended. So let's just go ahead and add major seven so you can see that just because we're making it a major seventh chord, it's still gonna be the same shape. And that's the beauty of it. C major, C major seven, major, major seven, major, major seven, or major, major seven, or also major, major seven, and then up the octave again, major, major seven. So hopefully it's making sense that you're not changing the shape, you're really just adding things to it. And that's what I love about this system. Once I nail this in one key, then I can simply copy and paste it to any other key, like I was mentioning before. Level five, which is gonna be connecting the shapes, adding your favorite licks, and ultimately just fretboard freedom. Connecting some of these shapes together. <laughs> This makes it a bit more of a personalized experience for you. You're taking these shapes and you're kind of just weaving in and out of them with the different scales, the arpeggios, your favorite licks, so on and so forth. In conclusion, I absolutely love the cage system. Ever since I learned it in high school from my teacher, I've taught it to so many students over the years. I love the systematic approach. It certainly makes navigating this instrument so much easier and it enables me to focus on what's truly important, the music. That's it for today, guys. If you wanna dive deeper into the cage system and truly master and organize this fretboard, get in touch with me for private lessons. All of the information is in the description below. Oh, and be sure to follow me on my other social media platforms at Brandon Paul Official. I'll see you next week for another video on here. Bye.